Good evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bringing you information about your library and your community. This evening my guest is Stacy Peterson and I've asked her to come and tell us about all the wonderful art and music events we have happening this fall at Peoria Public Library. Hey Stacy. Hey Trisha. <laughs> Glad I could catch you between things. Yeah, so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of, one of the things that you've got booked for us is Music in the McKenzie, which I hope people will see our, our cool new logo and things around town, but we hope yeah. for this to be an ongoing series, right? We do. We do, actually. Um, kind of following on the heels of having a klezmer band at the North Branch, and then we had Little Rev who played Tin Pan Alley songs from the 30s, and then we brought in the Lewiston High School tube band who played on PVC pipes. Um, the music acts are really well received up there and the acoustics in that room is just fantastic. So I thought, how about if we just do an ongoing thing, hopefully on Sundays, so we can get families in there. Yeah. And given the acoustics and the layout, probably a smaller group, individual performers. Yeah. Um, so named for uh, Mr. McKenzie, who was part of like, so an instrumental much. part of the, what the libraries look like to this day. Yeah. Um, all performances will be free. All but one held on a Sunday. Um, every month I've got up to next half of next year booked. But like you said, we're hoping that this is going to be ongoing yeah. forever and, and ever. And what a great thing for people to be able to see new, exciting musical acts in a you know comfortable place for free. Yep. Easy parking, can bring the kids, don't have to worry about a babysitter, because they're all ones kids would enjoy too. They're all ones kids would enjoy, and they've got, the, the part of the agreement is that the bands are going to donate portion of their sales to the Friends of the Peoria Public Library, mm -hmm. so you can go enjoy a free afternoon with the family, buy a CD, support the library, check out a book, I yeah. mean, and still be home in time for dinner. Yeah, so it's, that, that'll we're be excited. Great. It'll we're be great, excited. great way to spend Sunday. Yeah. So in September, who's coming? September 23rd, our first, the inaugural performance, we have a trio called the Stray Birds. They are from southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, and a lot of acoustic bluegrass, a lot of American roots music. So fans of folk music will really enjoy these guys. They're going to be playing with limited electricity and we are kind of going for kind of an intimate acoustic performance every time. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be kicking it off at two o'clock on that Sunday. That'll be great. I am excited about them. They've yeah. never been to Peoria so it'll be neat to give them a little bit of Midwestern hospitality. Yeah. And if anybody watch or listens to Folk Alley online they were just featured on Folk Alley. So they're, mm -hmm. they're going places, and this might be your chance to see somebody who's going to be very well-known very soon. Right, or who, who are really well-known already. Because, yeah. for example, our October performer, uh -huh. it's a gentleman named Patrick Hazel. Patrick Hazel is known as the godfather of Iowa blues. And I know that sounds crazy, who has blues in Iowa. <laughs> but I've seen him play, and he has got it down. He started playing um, Boogie Woogie Piano. He endorses uh, Hunter harmonicas. He's been inducted into the Iowa Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, a museum that I have visited in Okoboji, Iowa. And he's just a <laughs> wonderful one-man performer. He has a loyal following. Uh, he's already started promoting us on his website. He has over 36 recordings to his name. So we're very excited to bring somebody also of his stature, and, a little bit what? closer to home, but yeah. you know, definitely Well, I've heard that he's known. one of the world's best harmonica players as well. It's been so Said. It has been said, this so we is, hope to see some of that in action. We're going to have all the kids going home and wanting to play harmonica. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Here is me. Write us letters, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Tell us the date for that one that again. That is October 15th, or 14th, pardon me, October 14th, again at 2 o'clock. And Sunday. Sunday, mm -hmm. North Branch. Right. Yeah. And so if people are not catching these dates, we they're on the web calendar. You can pick up, you know, passages. You can... Go we have these the wonderful librarian. bookmarks that are going to be yep. in different, you know, community areas bookmark. in the library, in mm -hmm. different places. You will not be able to miss the distinctive logo. We're going to have the schedule on the back, as well as the websites. You can go and listen to their music and see videos of them ahead of time. We're, yeah. It's going to be very to exciting. Know, to know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll Get be great. Okay, and then our next one will be November. November. Now, November is kind of, it's going to be on a Monday night, so it's a little bit different. November 5th. It's, again, in the McKenzie. It's the only one that's off the Sunday schedule, partially because these are two recording artists from the Smithsonian label. Um, so already you know that they are going to be in demand. They have a very packed touring schedule, but it's a husband and wife team, and they're called the, I want to say the Evermores. 
The Everharts. Everharts. I'm thinking of the Waymores who are coming in February of next year. The Everharts are coming. So again, a nice duo, American Roots music, recordings have already been out there, and you know, they're just going to be really fun to host when we see them. Yeah, that'll be great. That'll, that'll be, be great. great. And so our last one is in December. December and 16th. This is a group I know well. Yes, this is yeah. a group that came to us by way of you and your recognition. <laughs> Kick to the curb. Yeah. Um, they sound fantastic. You can yeah. tell that they look like they're going to have a good time. Duo. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it's American Roots kind of yeah, bluesy. Blues, blues yeah. Mm -hmm. They, they, they play all over Illinois. Yeah, they play all over Illinois. And Johnny Classing is often billed as, as Southside Johnny. He's from oh Southside of Chicago, but lives south of Springfield now. And so they have a wide range. They go everywhere. And uh, they play both acoustic and then they, you know, they play... Um, electric stuff too but yeah for us they're going to do their their great acoustic act that they have and everybody's going to enjoy johnny's vocals he's fabulous well i tell you from blues to bluegrass to folk to roots music we're going to really have everything covered i think yeah. in this inaugural season and then there'll be more to come in 2013 so that'll be great it's yeah. going to be fun fun i to hope see we i hope we can uh, get some of that stuff out by the time you know, have that out by the time the first performers come so that people can mark their calendars. Save the date. Save it's that the important It's the whole thing date. of buying the season ticket, but without spending a cent. That's exactly. <laughs> Tell me where you can go and see nationally recognized recording artists for free. I mean, mm -hmm. people are paying good money to go see them at other venues, mm -hmm. but we are so proud and excited to bring them for free yeah. to the community. Mm -hmm. And that's what Peoria Public Library is all about, of course, is sharing resources. And so mm -hmm. this is our way of, you know, bringing that and strengthening our community through the arts. Yeah. And if there's anything, like we, if we get people who come to the performances and they say, I know a band out of Chicago or out of Lexington, give us those names. We'd love to hear that feedback. If there's mm -hmm. something that you're not seeing, once again, contacting the programming department, it, we'd love to bring it to the people. Whatever they want, we will try our hardest to bring that to out there. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay, and speaking of the arts, of course, music is just one form of art, and yes. we've got the visual arts, and we have our beautiful, beautiful gallery, and we've got that all filled up with great things to come, too, starting in September. We do. Have? We have. Well, in September, we are very proud to host an inaugural collaboration with the Illinois Artists League. This is a group comprised of oh, well over 200 members from central Illinois, so we're including Peoria all the way over to Bloomington Normal Springfield. Decatur, I mean really the big swath here. These are some professionals, some people who paint in their spare time and a variety of media. Um, and they are going to be coming for the month of September. You will have seen some of their work before because some of them participated in the Rennick Art Show that we had earlier this mm -hmm. year, partnered with the Historical Society. Um, some people will have seen their work at the Washington Art Fair, the Peoria Heights Art Fair in Decatur, mm -hmm. Springfield and formerly the Junction City Art Fair, but we're gonna have them in the main library in that beautiful gallery space mm -hmm. that everybody compliments us on for the entire month of September, so. Which once again, oh. it's there for the whole month. The whole month. It's free and the gallery is open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So this is more like pick your time. You don't have to rush to get to the art fair Right. And worry about the weather and you're too hot and you're too cold and the bugs are biting you or what, whatever. Right. You know, you've got all the time in the world and can come back again if you, you know, like things and come back again. If, and you know, if that's we're what open, I find people do often do is we'll come back several times. I've noticed people will go down to local history and they'll say, I don't have time right now. And then you're right. You see them again. We mm -hmm. also offer a gallery walks and talks. Usually I think it's the second uh, Wednesday of each month. And that's at what, two o'clock? Two o'clock. And mm -hmm. we do a tour of the gallery. And then we give a, an additional tour of the facility ending in our Friendly Finds book sale room. So if people want to see the work, that's kind of a nice way to get... Um, a personalized touch to it and of course we have um, companion receptions for these exhibits right and so, those are going to be fun too those it's are like fun. come to a party usually on Saturdays mm -hmm. September 15th for this show from 1 to 3 in that gallery space and you get to actually mingle with the artists which is always fun get a bite to eat yeah. check out a book yeah you yeah, know see what else is going on the and, and so often people understand the artwork much better when they've had a chance to go on the gallery walk or to meet the artists who've created this work and it really really illuminates the display for you so yeah. if you if that's not something you've done before if you're not a big art lover 
haven't ever developed that, you know, this is a, a chance to dabble. It is. You know, and find maybe a new love and a, a new appreciation of things. And it's not intimidating at all. Everybody no. is very engaging. They love to um, talk about their artwork or explain a process. And you always see people walking mm -hmm. away with an understanding or an appreciation or just kind of gratitude that they had that chance to speak to the person who created that piece. It's really fun to see. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then this one goes away at the end of September, and in October you have a wonderful photography exhibit coming. I do. I've got, we've um, secured a woman who used to be from this area. Her name is Kay Herbst Helms. She actually worked at the Forest Park Nature Center. She's no stranger to the art community. She moved up to um, St. Paul, Minneapolis area, and she started doing photography, black and white photography. She's fascinated with hands, and she started a series with a series of nuns' hands, so she would just photograph these nuns' hands. And she entitled that series, um, Those Who Serve. Then she started working with some farmers from the Rochester, Minnesota area and really found strength and beauty in their hands as well. So for our space, she's going to bring a combined show of both the hand photography of the nuns and the hand photography of the farmers, and it's going to be called Of Heaven and Earth. Oh, um, very nice. we, we're very excited to host her. She's been in several galleries up in the Twin Cities area done gallery talks, has been published in different books. She's going to actually drive the pieces down and install them herself. Oh, nice. And then we'll have the opportunity to host her on October 6th from 1 to 3 at a reception. Okay. Um, this is exciting because we are also partnering with many community agencies because Arts is National Humanities Awareness Month. And in the Peoria area there will be arts programming going on all over town. And I'm very proud to say that the Peoria Public Library System will be contributing a lot of events to this in all of our locations so once again we always encourage everybody to come to our branch locations but there will be a lot of things going on in the month of October. Yeah and of course once again that's all on the web calendar or ask at the desk. And passages has lovely passages, articles about it. Passages newsletter and if you don't get passages of course just sign up on the web page to get it electronically. Yeah. Come in pick one a paper one up and we'll be glad to do that or if you join the friends you automatically get a paper one mailed to you. That's right. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And then in November, we have um, veterans. We do. We have expressions of those who served. And this is a show that came to us partially because uh, we were working with Nancy Davis from the Illinois Art League. And as she and I were walking through the gallery, we started talking a little bit about different things we'd like to do, and we both got very excited talking about um, veterans who use art as therapy from their experience. And she's been to Danville, to th where they have a huge art therapy program there for mm -hmm. veterans at their facility. And then we started talking about veterans who are just hobbyists who do all kinds of work. And at, at that point, we said, we really need to do a show for this. Yeah. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Let's do it in November. Let's try to do some Veterans Day events, planning. And she took it and she just she's run with it. She's um, working with the local order of the Purple Heart. They are going to come and they're going to present uniforms on display. We're going to have artwork that's used as therapy as well as artwork that is just these men who do men and women who do art as hobby it's going to be i think the first exhibit of its kind at least in central illinois in peoria That'll be area exciting we're really excited about it. It's going to be a wonderful event. Yeah. It's going to be. We're anticipating yeah. probably more entries than we might even have space for. Oh. But it's going to be a really, a really uh, gratifying and exciting month for the gallery. And is there a reception for that one? There will be a reception for that as well. That's going to be on November third. We didn't want to do it the second weekend because that was too close to Veterans Day. Right. We There's didn't want so to make many, it a conflict. Yeah. So many yeah. things going on. So you can start your your honoring veterans a exactly. little early and come to that reception and then continue. and then the gallery walk of course also will happen on the second wednesday at two yep second yep. wednesday at two and okay. we're planning additional programming at all the branches for that too so oh, hopefully we can get some artists to come in and talk about it and we're really looking forward to it it's going to be a really exciting month that's exciting Okay, and then the last thing we have is um, authors is another form of art, which of course the library has always promoted authors, but we've got always. some exciting things coming up, and the first one's a local broadcaster. Yes, if you listen to WMBD Radio, you are no stranger to the traffic announcer, Ken Zersky, and that's how mm -hmm. many of us know him. Yeah. Um, little did we know he was writing a book on yeah. the wreck of the Columbia. It's been very well received. He is actually already starting a second book. He is a historian, I think, at heart and really enjoys 
writing about this story, which a lot of people knew about. It had not really been told. He will be at the North Branch on October 15th, which is a Monday night. And it'll be at 6 o'clock. He's going to do a presentation, and then he's going to do a book signing right after. And there's been a lot of publicity about Ken and his book, so we're really excited to host him and kind of see him step away from the microphone with traffic and then talk about something that he's passionate about. Well, it'll be enjoyable hearing him talk since he's an experienced speaker. But also, you're right, The Wreck of the Columbia is one of those stories that everybody sort of knows happened here, but they might not know all the details or they... They think, oh yeah, where is that the Great Lakes or whatever, and they don't realize that how many people from Pekin perished. Oh and yeah, to be able to read the the stories, and we have lots of information at the library, which I'm sure he probably, you know, made use of in the writing of this book. But mm -hmm. but uh, it should be very well done, I think. And of course, once again, the sales benefit the friends again, and so. and we anticipate big crowds for this because mm -hmm. of the regional interest. Yeah. Um, so I would suggest that people get there early. We don't want to pack the room too close to. We just want everybody to make sure they get a seat because yeah. it'll be a really enjoyable program. It will program. be. It will be. Mm -hmm. And then in November, you have another author coming also locally, but telling a story from far away and long ago. Yes, I've got Dr. McDonald coming. He's a retired chiropractor. He's, uh, I believe it's November 18th. I want to say you can always check the web calendar. It's a Sunday at the in the McKenzie Room at the North Branch. He's going to actually talk a little bit about um, the camps and World War II, and I don't want to give too much away, but it's, it's a very personal story involving his father and his family. Um, and as far as I know, he's presented this once at another um, speaking engagement, but his book was just published. And he's, he's a very interesting guy. Behind the Gates is his, his book. He's got a website. So be on the lookout for that. And then in December, we're going to have another local author fair. We had a very successful one at the auditorium at Maine. And we thought we would do a holiday version so people could get some holiday shopping done. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be the first, I want to say it's the first Sunday in December. We're going to have speakers in the seminar room. And then at the same time, you'll be able to go up to the McKenzie room and visit with the local authors. Maybe pick up some gifts for you know your holiday shopping. Yeah, come for in, your book lovers. For your book lovers or people that just want some regional Peoria gift. So yeah. we continue to try to support those local authors and give them a venue where they can present their work. We're very that'll, excited. That'll be great. And those have always been really wonderful because you know the, the authors come one at a time and maybe you miss them, maybe you get to see them, maybe mm -hmm. it's not a time when you can come. So this is a chance to get to see them all together. The, the people who publish locally that you know we really really like yeah and of course we do have a wide selection of books about Peoria and local authors in our friendly finds bookstore oh yeah which is on lower level two at main library and run by the friends and all that money goes to support things like these other these other programs we're bringing in, like the musicians and mm -hmm. and everybody. So nothing's really better than a regional gift from yeah. the Friendly Finds. It says exactly. you can get a wonderful tote bag. It's got Peoria written all over yeah. it. Or you can get the Peoria history books and it's just you know great. Monica West, Vest Wheeler's books and yes. all sorts of things. And, and Monica, speaking of Monica Vest Wheeler, she will be at the North Branch reading spooky stories on October twenty fourth. I know that's hard for us to think about Halloween when it's still lovely outside and school is just starting, but Looking ahead, oh, she's, people are planning their costumes. Though. Uh, yes, you know they, that are. they are, and she's wonderful. <laughs> she's so engaging that we hope to see people. We've never tried this spooky story time by the fireplace, but there's a first for everything. I'm sure she's going to make it really spectacular. That'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, we're not on this show talking about all the arts events we have for kids, but there are a lot of them coming up. A yeah. lot of them, and so the best place to find out about that is kid events. But another thing we have going on is November is the Write a Novel Month where novelists challenge themselves to get that baby written in oh my one gosh. month. And so we're going to help out a little with that, with a sort of a creative space. We are. We're giving them a space to do kind of this aggressive writing campaign where they, you're, you said it perfectly, they get mm -hmm. together, they encourage each other to write, and they kind of lock themselves in and just write, 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 and critique each other. Um, so that's, yeah, the Peoria Novel Club, that'll be very interesting to see how that kind of comes to fruition. Maybe yeah. we'll have the next bestseller penned at the North Branch. Won't that be great? That'd be exciting. Mm -hmm. I do actually know someone who the past couple of years has posted her progress on that on you know, social networking sites and has the last two years managed to write a novel 
during the month of November. So it it sounds silly, but it is it is doable. But then she's published them as ebooks. So oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and with publishing the way it is today, is you know you don't always have to have got all the print on demand stuff mm -hmm. and all the things you can just go out there and read things as an ebook and it's ready to go. That's that's wonderful. We've covered so much today. I feel like we had to go back and and uh, refresh people's memory. We had um, music in the Mackenzie, which is on Sunday afternoons. Mm -hmm. And can you rattle off the dates again, real fast? Sure. September twenty third, the Stray Birds from southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, October fourteenth, Patrick Hazel, the blues man from Iowa. November fifth, a Monday night, the only Monday night. We have the Everhearts, and then December sixteenth, kick to the curb, two o'clock, Mackenzie room. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots and lots of fun. And then let's review again, too, in the gallery, who else coming? Sure. We've got Illinois Art League coming mm -hmm. for the month of September with a reception being held on the 15th. Month of October, we have Kay Herbst Towns of Heaven and Earth with a reception on October 6th. Uh, in the month of November, we have <laughs> Expressions of Those Who Serve, the Veterans Art Show with the reception November 3rd from 1 to 3. And in December, we're going to be doing holiday displays. Mm -hmm. And we should talk about the fact that our art gallery, and people may not have seen it yet, but we have the Wheeler case oh, on lower yeah. level two outside of the auditorium. And these are also community spaces, and they're spaces for the community to show you know, their interests and what, what they want to do. And one of the things I know your department had asked is, can we tell people that, you know, if you've got a collection, you have an interest, a smaller one, we have the Wheeler case available. If you have a collection of teacups, if you have a collection of origami, you know, if origami you have, antique dolls. Mm -hmm. um, we want to showcase that. We And we do everything from, um, you know, war items. We had a display case all dedicated to World War II. Currently we're showing, um, because of our naturalization ceremony, we're showing immigrants who came to Peoria, which was something that was curated by Linda Allward and, uh, and Bob Meismer from our library. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful display. Amarin is going to be putting in a display about energy efficiency. And then we're going to have a lovely Native American display with traditions from the Four Directions Healing Center. That'd so, I mean, we really want to use that as a community space. If you've got something that you want to display, we'd love to use that. Yeah, I know people are probably used to that in libraries, but it's often a small tabletop display, and this is a very nice, nice place. We've had yeah. Um, some displays in it, people were a little bit reluctant because the the lowest level of the library was not up and running in full use yet, but now it is. There's a constant yeah. stream of people. It's a great place to showcase whatever it is you have, whether it's your needlework or your collection mm -hmm. or, you know, telling a story about something, whatever it is, we've 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 got that room. And the same thing goes, of course, for the gallery. We're booked fairly far out, but mm -hmm. if you have something, you know, that can, your group of artists or historians or whatever yeah. has something to show, we can do that because that gallery also is used for historical displays. We've had, it is. we had a fine romance this past year. We had, we've had the Louisa May Alcott exhibit, so... Quilts and stoneware. Quilts and stoneware. So we really have a little bit of fine everything. art, photography, history. Mm -hmm. Someday we'll have a science exhibit. Perhaps. Someday, that's right. As long as it reflects the interest of the community, we'll mm -hmm. do it, and we mm -hmm. can get calendars for 2014 and 2015. So yeah, we're you know. we're booking those things out. We have Lincoln and the Constitution coming in 2014. Oh, that's going to so, be an exciting one. Yeah, so yeah. we are we are booking years out already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Get your calendar out because yeah. you're not going to want to forget these dates. <laughs> it's long, long and complicated. Yeah, so we do want people to do that. And we should probably leave this show. We've got a few minutes yet to talk about another thing that's going on, and that is Don't Shoot Peoria. Dot com, mm -hmm. which began as a Peoria Reads, was launched with Peoria Reads, which of course the partnership there is commonplace in Peoria Public Library. And we gave away free books. Yeah, many, free many, free many, books, many, many copies books. of Don't Shoot, a book by David Kennedy mm -hmm. that outlines an anti-gun violence project. And I know that uh, you know all of our top justice law enforcement people have joined together to try and reduce gun violence in Peoria. And they keep saying, read the book. And I think maybe people don't quite understand that, no, you're not going to get people to put their gun down by reading a book. 
but it may give you a different way of thinking about why do all those people have guns and what can I do to help? Because yeah. David Kennedy spent a long time on the street. He talked to the grandmas, he talked to the criminals, he talked. He spent time with the cops. And what he found out is people are afraid. People have guns because they're afraid. People shoot because they're afraid they don't think they have another option. Mm -hmm. And a quick and easy way to find out about it is to go to DontShootPeoria.com. There's a video, there's statistics. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that everyone in Peoria needs to join together and think about what can our community do. And there is a way. This has worked in over 70 oh communities, gosh. right? Baltimore, Detroit. I mean, the key tenet mm -hmm. to this is we are a community. This violence, although it may seem that it's sometimes it's isolated to certain neighborhoods, it affects all it of affects us as everybody. a community. And there's an interconnectivity that you'll see when you read that book and you'll realize just how how much we can do as individuals and how collectively that'll work together to to help this program. We're very, very excited to be a part of that Don't Shoot program. Right, right. So I want to thank you, Stacy, for taking time out from booking all these great things <laughs> for us to come and tell us about them. Well, so, thanks for having me. Yeah, it'll be great. And um, once again, there's so much information we've given you here, but it's all available at PeoriaPublicLibrary.org. You can call the library and ask when the dates are. You can pick up a bookmark, a newsletter. The information's out there. Check the Journal Star. We put it out to all the media, and you're going to be able to find those dates. Again, we have music in the Mackenzie on Sunday afternoons at North Branch. We have wonderful art displays in our gallery and uh, the Wheeler case, and we're looking for things to put in there. So if you're interested, just call Peoria Public Library and ask for the programming department. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is book rooms for your own meeting right. um, or your own performance or whatever you want to do. And again, if you have things to display, you have questions, all you have to do is give us a call. You can even email. If you go on the website, you'll find all those email addresses ready for you to go. So make sure that uh, you see all this. And if you've missed any of these shows, you can see them on YouTube. We'll see you next week on Information Please. Mm -hmm.